That's all right. Um, okay. Well, um, the uh, Gunters are still on the road. I'm sorry they're not here because I was going to apologize for ever making light of how hard it is to mow this yard out here. Nancy's sister Evelyn's going to have hip surgery here uh, on the 20th. She's her full blood sister by birth. Lives out by the golf course. She's a nurse for Dr. Graham and, and Sarah. So keep her in your prayers. She's like everybody else. She's put it off for a decade and now she's got to have it. Wrong film. Um, uh, Patrick is going to Georgia next week. Week after the week last weekend. Last weekend of this month, oh Memorial Day weekend, he will be gone. His academic team, his real academic team, not us. <laughs> 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 no, we're not, we don't. We don't have to go to Georgia. It's okay, Steve. We don't. Have you guys are not going on the road. Don't worry. No, I'm not taking you on the road. He is driving all the way to Georgia in the school minibus, so pray for him to be him and whatever other adults go to those kids that are with him and there and back. That is one of the busiest traffic weekends of the year, so be very, very careful. On a serious note with that, too, uh, one of my players that graduated last year uh, was going to be going with us because he... Uh, works for this organization to read questions and stuff. Um, he attempted suicide um, oh. yesterday um, and will not be going with us. Uh, fortunately, he's okay and is in the city um, recovering and doing well. Um, but uh, everybody will keep his family and him in the prayers. There's a graph somewhere of how many teenagers early 20s have committed suicide or attempted suicide and from the early 60s to now it's just and I don't know if it has anything to take in God and prayer and religion out of school or not but I don't know. Alright, let's have a prayer and we'll begin. Father in heaven we're so thankful for this day and for the blessings you've given us. We're thankful for all the things that in this life that we have, the material things. We're thankful for our family and our friends that surround us. We're thankful most of all for the blood of Christ that cleanses us from our sins, for our brothers and sisters in Christ that we may live together in this life and we may live together in the next. Be with us this night as we study your word. We pray that we'll take it in our hearts and live by day by day. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, Lisa. I'm sorry I didn't say hello to you. Anyway, all right, Jeremiah 6. I'm going to read down through 8. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet of Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in uh, Beth Hecklerim. For evil appeareth out of the north in great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall... Come unto her, they shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise, and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, and let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, <coughs> thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees and cast a mound against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. As a fountain casteth out her water, so she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. 
before me continually with grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate land not inhabited. This is almost a past tense thing because God's already made up his mind what he's going to do. Children of Benjamin. Okay? What two tribes do we have in Jerusalem at this time? Mainly. We may have remnants of others. Hmm? Close. Beautiful. Benjamin. Which one did Jesus come out of? Luke, you got the book. Judah. Judah. Lion of Judah. Very good. Okay, he says, Flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet at Tekoa and set a sign or a, a signal of fire in Beth Beth Hakrim. southern border or the southern line of Jerusalem's influence at this time. Egypt has become a material uh, military might. They've come north. So he, he spe specifies these two cities <coughs> for some reason. I'm not, I, I really don't know for sure. Somebody knows you can fill me in. For evil appeareth out of the north in great destruction. Um, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Uh, Steve, what what does the New King James say in verse two? What does the whole verse say? Though? King James and the American Standard both translate it that way, but literally, uh, it doesn't. When well, I say the American Standard, King James translates it that way. Let's see if I can find. Um, Yeah, the American Standard says the comely and delicate one, the daughter of Zion, I will cut off. Uh, actually, uh, the Hebrew, that's the correct translation. I don't know why the King James is wrong. But he will cut off. Yeah, he's likened her to that, but he's also going to cut her off or, in a sense, divorce her because... He's like in Jerusalem to his bride. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her, they shall pitch their tents against her. So when this, uh, when, when uh, the Babylonians come from the north, they see them coming, they're going to gather around the town. But he says, prepare ye war against her uh, in the day, but that will, take, that will stretch out into the night. And let us destroy her palaces, Verse six, thus saith the Lord, uh, and this is what's going. This is what the Babylonians are going to do: hew down trees, cast them out against Jerusalem. This is city. Jerusalem was a walled city, so the way they laid siege to cities up until the modern times when we had artillery to break down walls, they usually uh, build a big ramp, and it might take weeks to do, because they were being shot at with arrows and everything from the walls. They would build a ramp to get up over the wall. So that's what he's talking about here. He says in verse 7, and he's talking about Jerusalem again, about Israel, God's people. As a fountain casteth out her waters, like a fountain would spray its waters out, she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. 
for me continually is grief and woe. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, let my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, the land I inhabit. It sounds like they're going to, he's still giving them a chance to repent, but his mind's already made up, and they, their mind's made up, they're not going to. All right, questions or comments down to verse 8. It's not comely, it's the word lichen. Oh. Now the word lichen, yeah, he, he, she is a comely and delicate woman. That's how he's considered Israel. And Jerusalem is his bride, but the word lichen in the King James is the word dama, D-A-M-A-H, and it means to cease, to cause to cease, to cut off, to destroy, to perish. So I don't know why... It's translated the word lichen uh, there instead of I will destroy or I will cut off. All the other translations use simple, something similar. New King James says the same thing as the old. Or pretty much the same meaning anyway. And I don't, you know, there are textual, uh, they call them textual variants, where the people transcribing may have made an error, got a word out of place, or lived out of place. I don't know if that's what this is or not. I haven't researched it. But I caught that looking over this. That, uh, and I just, I flip back and forth between two or three different translations and I look at two or three commentaries and look at the definitions in the Bible dictionary and, and I noticed that, that really isn't what that word means. So that would better. He's saying here, I'm going to, I am going to destroy, even though she is, has been a delicate and comely woman to me, I'm going to cut her off and I'm going to destroy her. Yeah. Now, I read that will be so, you know that. So. Right. It just kind of stuck in there if, it, if, you, if you translate that wrong. Uh, so I'm not sure. I haven't researched that. Uh, there may be an answer in the commentary of why the King James has it that way. But I didn't find it in my study. If you found it, let me know. Verse 6, what is the purpose of cutie down trees? Well, yeah, that's part of the, they're making a, a ramp. Uh, if it's probably made out of trees and dirt. Um, unless you want to have just a big old wide broad ramp, you have to have a probably have to have a wall. How about you do some historical research on sieges and, and ramps? Huh? He has time. Okay. Uh, Lou, why don't you do some research on <laughs> Uh, I'll expect two pages double spaced, about 500 years. Uh, they built them all different ways. It depends on what resources they had. But in ancient times, there were apparently a lot of trees around Jerusalem. It's not that way now. But apparently, there were a lot of trees. And it was probably a bit easier to use trees and dirt something like that. That's my that's my uh, well, it would explanation. Like, I would think it would be like using rebar in a building today if you put the trees inside the uh, the earth works then it would be more structural as well. Um, it takes yeah. less dirt. Now here's a man that's worked in dirt work all his life. He can tell you, you you can move a lot of dirt or you can form it up with a little dirt. So that's I'm guessing that's what they're doing. Uh, I think we'll see what Well the Romans um, seized one of the Jewish cities. Okay. 
Uh, Clark says it could be to make siege machines too. There's another thing they did in ancient times, uh, and I don't know if the Greeks invented them, but we would call them a trebuchet or a catapult today. But they called them siege machines, and they were made out of wood. So it could be that too. We don't know, but for whatever reason, the trees and the trees and the ramp were part of the siege on Jerusalem. Overthrow it. Cast them out. Yeah. The Romans did this at one point in time when they were attacking a particular <coughs> city near Jerusalem that was up on top of the mountain, and it took them three three months to build this uh, ramp at a particular angle so they could take their siege. Well, that was up on a hill about 500 foot high, wasn't it? That was. Uh, I did until I hit about 50. I don't think it was a It was a difference. It was the city was right on It was the holdout of. They had wells. It was a holdout of some of the groups that opposed Rome. Uh, anyway. But trees, I mean, we you cook your food on it, you make a chair and sit on it, make a table, eat your food on it. So. Actually, actually, the word is solila, and it means mound. Strong says it's a military mound that is a rampart of the siege, a bank or a mound. So it's actually both. They're going to mount from defensive, but they're going to build a mound to do it. A few more comments, and I don't have to go any further. Yeah, it's it's mount or mound or nuking James says what mound. Yeah, it's uh, you know, cast a mount against your camera. Right. Let's let's go on then. You hit something and come back. I'm gonna read down through 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as the grape gather into <coughs> excuse me into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabit inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the east, or from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, Every one is given to covetousness, and from the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they will be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old path, where is, <coughs> where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken.
Okay. They shall, verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back that hand as a grape gathered into the basket. I don't know if any of you picked grapes much. We used to have some friends that had grapes, and I had some relatives. And, you know, unless you leave just a little few stragglers, you get all the grapes that are there when they arrive. So the Babylonians are going to take the captives just like a, a vineyard owner would gather his grapes. Clean them out. He makes two or three illustrations here to make a point. He makes a general point that it's going to be everybody. Uh, there will be, be a few stragglers, the sick and the maimed and those, but by and large, it's going to be everybody. Um, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Nobody's going to look, nobody's listening. So their, their ear is uncircumcised. In other words, their ears grown shut. Well, they, they won't listen. In fact, not only will they not listen, but the word of the Lord, King James says, is a reproach unto them. Uh, a reproach, a scorn, a taunt. The new King James uses a different word. Uh, reproach. And they have no delight in it. They're offended at what God has said. Man, the nature of man doesn't change. If we if we reject God, we're offended at even the words of God. Don't even want to hear. He says, therefore, because they won't listen, they won't hear, and they and my word is offensive to them. All right, I'm full of fury. I'm ready. <laughs> I've had enough. You kids don't settle down. You're gonna get a whooping. How many times are you gonna have to tell your kids that before you pull the car? whooping. God's done. I'm weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad, upon the assembly. And notice he says, the children abroad, the assembly of young men. Even the husband and the wife shall be taken and the aged with it. Children, young men, husbands and wives, the old people. Who's left? Not very many. Now we know that Jeremiah was in prison and we're going to see that uh, Nebuchadnezzar lets him, the Babylonian king, and lets him stay. So there will be a few that are allowed to stay. But by and large, it's everybody. Babies to their will be. And their houses will be turned to others. Other people are going to take their possessions and live in their houses. With their fields and their wives together, for I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of my support. And from the least, okay, the whole vine, age wise, from the youngest to the oldest, and in importance, social importance, money, whatever. From the greatest of them, uh, from the least of them to the greatest of them, they're given to the covetousness, and from the property of the priest, they're one deal with also. They're all, they all deserve to go, and they're all going to go. Now, are there exceptions to this rule? Can you think of any exceptions to what he's talking about here? Daniel? Well, Jeremiah is a prophet, but there's going to be some young men that when they do go into captivity are faithful to God. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's going to be some princes of Israel that either repent or they're already faithful before they go because they... Uh, and then there's going to be some prophets. Ezekiel, others. So, the general rule is nobody is listening. Nobody cares. And so I'm going to take them all to captivity. With few exceptions. And they all deserve to go. With few exceptions. 
14, okay. This is an interesting verse because this is repeated two or three times in the Old Testament. They have healed, uh, they have healed also the hurt of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. <clears throat> this is, these are the prophets, the false prophets, saying, oh, no, 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 we're going to, we're going to prosper. Egypt or somebody will come to our rescue. God's not going to let his people go into slavery, even though it's happened once before. One, one man said this is like a doctor treating a wound and not taking care of the wound, but just closing it and telling the person, you're okay. You have an open wound, a dirty open one, you go to a doctor, he doesn't even clean it out. He doesn't dig around in it see if there's anything in it that'll cause an infection. He just sews it up and says, you're okay. You're healed. What's going to happen to that woman? Whatever limb it's on or wherever it's at, it's, you're either going to lose a limb or lose your life because it's going to be infected, it's going to fester, might get gangrenous. Well, that's what's happened here. These people have turned away from God who good in them, spiritually, and they have turned to false teachers that told them, you're okay, everything's fine. So in a spiritual sense, they've closed the wound that needed to be debrided and cleaned. They need to repent. They didn't. So now all the festering of their sin has come to the conclusion in the whole nation of Canaan. That's pretty graphic, I know, but that's kind of the way it is in God's life. In the way it's done. Uh, and he says, were they ashamed when they did these things? Are people ashamed today when they take their little boy and have him cast ready because he says he wants to be a girl? They're ashamed because they're wicked. And that's the way Israel was in this day. They weren't ashamed. In fact, they were so far into sin they couldn't even blush. They had no sense of guilt, no sense of shame. So thus said the Lord, He, he told them through the, through the prophets, Go stand in the ways. Okay, we know a way is what? Path or a road. The so ways plural, ways of traveling. In a sense, he's saying, go out where the roads meet. Go out to the crossroads where two or more roads meet. <coughs> to see, find the old paths, the ancient paths. I'm talking about the paths of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I'm talking about the paths that God would have them walk. And he said, where is the good way of walking that? You'll find rest. But they said, we're not going to work. We're not going to work. That's like somebody stopping and said, can you tell me how to get to so-and-so? Wherever. You know, the old, the old Jill Miller film strips that they use Florida. You say, well, you can go to Florida. There's several ways. But what if there was only one way? And you said, you got to go get on this road and go this direction so many miles. And you go, they say, no, I don't want to go there. They remind you of anybody, maybe in Kings, prophet told him to do something. He said, I don't want to do that. Naaman, maybe, from Assyria. The prophet told him to cure his lips. He go dip seven times in the Jordan. He said, can I go to one of the clean rivers at home? That's a little dirty river. And that's what happened to the people here. And he said, I set watchmen. Uh, prophets are called watchmen uh, in Isaiah and Ezekiel. So he's talking about prophets here. I sat watching over you to hearken to the sound of the trumpet and then listen to God's warning, but they wouldn't listen. How many times do we have to be warned we're about to walk off the cliff before we look down and where we're walking and stop walking? They wouldn't stop. They wouldn't turn around. They wouldn't even listen. Questions or comments, then, Nathan? Black. Right. 
which uh, is at the beginning of the question. We're not immune to this. We should never think because we're Christians and members of the Lord's church, which is synonymous, that we're immune to any of this. We're not. That's why we have to be on guard. That's why we have to examine ourselves daily before we're in the faith. That's why we have to be circumspect, as Paul said. Watch. We're not immune. Okay. Okay. A little bit more time. Read as far as you can. Verse 18. Therefore, remember, you see the word therefore in the scripture, stop and see what, what it's there for. Therefore, hear, ye nation, and know, O congregation, what is among them. <clears throat> hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words nor did my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a fair country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet to me. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them, the neighbor and his friends shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north, a north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses, set in array as men for war against the old daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish hath taken a hold of us, and pain as a woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes, and make thee mourning, for as an only son, <coughs> most bitter lamentation. Excuse me. For the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous, revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed to the fire. The found, founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. Reprobate silver shall men call him, because the Lord hath rejected Okay, therefore, because of everything he's said up to that point. Listen to this. I'm going to bring an evil, which is going to be Babylon. You're going to be overthrown because you wouldn't listen to my law. You wouldn't pay attention to it and you reject it. Verse 20 is interesting. They bring in expensive incense and things to offer. You know, she was... She was up in Africa, Queen of Sheba, and she saw it. So this is imported expensive incense, apparently. And look at all the wonderful things we're offering in sacrifice to you, Lord. He said, What purpose cometh me incense from Sheba, sweet cane from the far country? Your burnt offerings are not accepted, your sacrifice is not sweet. What did, what did Samuel tell Saul? when he did kill King Agag and all the Amicites and brought back the animals. And all. Now, to obey is better than sacrifice. I believe it was the, it's either that or when he offered uh, when he offered the offering on. The offering is what got him kicked out of Big King. We can have the nicest building, wear the nicest clothes, meet every time the doors are open, go through and worship exactly the way God has said to do it, and it's still not accepted. Why? Right. Well, there's no heart. They're going through the ritual. They're putting on a good show. But as soon as they left the temple, what happened? 
They'd go back and worship their idols at home. They would go back and 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 uh, slander. They would go back and steal. They would go back and deal dishonestly in business. They practiced the religion on the surface, but they didn't practice it day to day. What did Jesus say about the Pharisees? You honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. That's exactly what was wrong with Jerusalem here. They rejected God's word in the Old Testament. He took them into captivity. Destroyed the city. They rejected Jesus. He didn't take them into captivity exactly. I guess they went into Roman captivity in different places. But he destroyed the city and didn't take them into At least the genealogies are gone. The, the documentation is gone. point is... We are susceptible to the same thing. Just because this happened you know, 2,500, 3,000 years ago means nothing. We're human just like they were. We are susceptible to the same thing. Uh, people that believe the Bible understand, but I... I don't think that makes a non-believer believe if they read the Bible even as a, a novel. <laughs> it is the conceit of an individual that that would never happen to me or I would never do that. You know, what do people say today? Well, if I had been a German in the 30s, I wouldn't have endorsed the Nazis or I wouldn't have turned a blind eye to Auschwitz and the camps. I, baloney. How do we know that's baloney? Because two years ago people were putting on masks that did nothing. You know what they found out now? Those A lot of those uh, ventilators they put people on uh, contributed to the death because it caused them to get an infection in the lungs that they didn't have to be with. Yeah. We followed the experts, just like they did in Germany in the 30s. Just like, just like the priests. Right yeah, here. the priests. Well, the Germany had science too. They were doing genetic experiments. They were doing, they were doing all kinds of experiments. They had a lot of science too. But it was the immorality of it, and it was the fact that you had to lay aside your personal judgment and follow what the state told you. And that's exactly where we are today in this country, in a lot of Western countries. Hmm? We brought both of our kids to turn. <laughs> yeah, but you're turning a blind eye to the rest of it. No, I'm going. What they're saying to those people. I know. Just like yeah. us, you know. I'm, I'm going. Uh, I mean, I'm taking my life in my hands here because some radical stumbles across this. And, but I, I'm speaking out against uh, a friend of mine. Not just one friend, but a lot. You bring up the topic of what God wants, what the Bible says, and they shut you down. I'm saved, and I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to heaven, and I don't want to talk about the Bible, and I don't want to talk about God. Well, that tells me maybe they're not quite that sure if they don't want to talk about it. People that are actually believe they're going to heaven are enthused, and they want to tell everybody about it, usually. So, I, anyway, about abortion or anything else, all of those things would be solved if we would just what? Fear God, keep His commandments. Here's the point I was trying to make, just like some other people probably did, that 
may not be able to taste the tuna. And we're really not in the position of doing that. We try everything we can, but what are we going to do? Actually, the abortion issue is solving itself because Roe v. Wade's been reversed and abortions have gone down. The fact is women are changing their hearts, partly because they're getting to see a sonogram of their unborn baby and hear its heartbeat. But we've got to change the heart. I mean, you can change laws until you're blue in the face, but until we change the hearts of people, men and women, nothing will change. So I've got to start with me and change my heart, make sure I'm doing what Micah said, I think it was Micah 4, 6, something about doing justly and following God, loving mercy, living justly. But it starts with me. You're right. Charlie's exactly right. It doesn't start with you. It starts with me. And if I don't get my life in order, I don't have any right to tell anybody else how to live. One day at a time. That's the reason we study the Old Testament. Paul wrote to the church at Rome, these things that are written aforetime are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have what? Hope. Because if all we do is watch the news in the evening and we don't read the Bible and we don't assemble with the church, we have no hope. That's all we see is the bad. We've got hope. Anything else? We're going to leave it right there at wherever Steve says we go to. We read through it, but we didn't discuss it all the way. I think I got down to about 20, 21. Yeah, somewhere in there. All right, thank you. Are you leaving? I thought I was leaving. You were, but you can't take over. You use your authority to go look for me. You want my songs? After the first song, Brother Steve will lead us in a little prayer. That's the first song is 475. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, no other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anger holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, no other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand.
Father in heaven, we're so thankful, Lord, that you've allowed us to gather once again together to study another portion of our word. We can sing songs of praises to you and worship you in the name that we pray is pleasing in your sight. We pray that we have taken the word that has spoken a lesson and been able to apply it to our lives today. That we'll be able to take it with us and to improve our lives. We thank you for being our God. We thank you, most of all, for the only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with those that can't be with us this evening, those that are traveling. We pray that you'll keep them safe. If any be able, we pray that they will lay their healing hand upon them, and that they will return to us as soon as possible. We pray that you'll be with those that are mentally able, and that through you and your word that we'll be able to find them, seek them out, and be able to help them. Thank you for the love that you have for us. And thank you for the only, <clears throat> only begotten Son who gave the cross for our sin and our only chance of salvation. We pray that <clears throat> we'll stay on the path that he has set for us. And that one day we might have that home and return to you with you. We have some Christ that we know that we pray. Amen. Amen. If you got some more from your song books, you know, the invitation song will be 723. And the invitation will be brought by the devil's heart. The song before the invitation will be 376. 376.
slow getting there. Amen. Long day. Well, turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 3. Ecclesiastes 3. We're going to read a few verses there. 1 through 8, I believe. Ecclesiastes 3. Start verse 1 here in a minute. You know this Ecclesiastes, we believe, was written by Solomon. He was a man who had tremendous wealth and knowledge, and he drank freely and abundantly from the cup of life. And I kind of, when I read Ecclesiastes, I see a man who's gotten old. He's reflecting back on life, what it was about. And uh, we'll just start reading there in verse 1. To everything there's a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Solomon's reflection there are very true. And uh, there is a time for a person to become a Christian. There's a time for a person to repent of their sins and what they've done. That time is always now. You can never wait. If you would like to become a Christian, your Christian has gone astray and he brings something that's repentance forward, or any other thing we can help and advise you with, come forward as we sing this next song. Thank you. Over again to me, wonderful words of mine. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life, words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of mine. Sinnerless to the loving call, wonderful words of mine. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of mine.